A new report from the EU's Copernicus service shows last year's heat topped that of 2023, the previous record holder. 2024 was also the first calendar year, more than 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. The threshold, scientists warn, significantly increases the impacts of climate change. Scientists link the record heat to dozens of extreme weather events last year, devastating floods in Spain, crippling drought across Brazil and South America, and, of course, powerful typhoons and cyclones that battered parts of Asia. The extremes are forecast to continue into 2025, and scientists are urging immediate action to avert worst-case scenarios. For more, let's bring in Kirsten Thonica. She's a deputy head of the research department on Earth Systems Analysis at the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research, joining us from Potsdam. Good to have you with us. Um, your work focuses on how climate and land use transform ecosystems, fire and biodiversity. What do you find the most notable about the human-made factors contributing to climate change right now? What we see is that we have uh, a strong contribution of the continued uh, greenhouse gas emissions accelerating climate change. So we do see a continued increase in fossil fuel emissions, greenhouse gas emissions uh, coming from land use change globally. And this contributes to climate warming. So we have a continued increase in global temperature rise. So we have just heard that the historic 1.5 degree increase recorded for 2024, coming with all these climate extremes that uh, just have been reported, all contribute to a pattern where we see what the world would look like um, if these conditions become the average conditions. And this is a stark warning. The World Meteorological Organization has warned Last year's uh, record-breaking heat is likely to continue into 2025. Why is that significant? How significant can that be? It is significant because it shows us um, how fragile our system is. And it also shows that we have no time to lose. We need to act quickly and need to make tremendous progress in reducing fossil fuel emissions, in reducing land loss, in protect, uh, accelerate our efforts to protect nature, um, because there are still some unknowns on the climate variability that we haven't fully understood. And this can be um, already a sign that the climate system, together with nature, is a lot more fragile than we had anticipated. Right. Um, so you say no time to lose. This was uh, 2024 was the first year where temperatures exceeded 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. The Paris Climate Goal aimed to limit the increase to that level. Some experts are calling that threshold now dead in the water. Would you agree? It is a scientific or a political question. That is that is um, the difference to make. Um, if this continues, and we probably have a little relief mainly only for a, a few years, um, then this is really um, scientifically or, say, climatologically dead. However, it's not something that we can, you know, just let go. Uh, we need to keep fighting because uh, we need to make sure that we still keep well below two degrees. Um, so every single digit here in this mark, be it 1.6 or 1.7 degrees um, increase in, in global, temp global mean temperatures, means that we can still reduce um, impacts that can come and we can reduce this what experts call overshoot in the climate. So have a, a bit of an overshoot then we have to tackle a lot of these climate extremes more often, more severe, as, as we have seen them, experienced them now in the past year. And this will be more the average conditions um, that will prevail. So, um, yeah, scientifically, this might be really at risk that, that we can still keep this, um, but we need to do everything we can um, every government, um, every person dedicate their efforts 
um, to reduce emissions, uh, to reduce the land use change, to protect nature, um, to yeah, to have a, the overshoot, as we call it, as, as small as possible, to still keep uh, global warming well below two degrees. Because what we see right now with these extremes is that uh, we we have an insight what the average conditions will look like. And this will put a lot of societies under tremendous stress and also affect political stability. Kirsten Thonecke from the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, for more on all of this, I'm joined in the studio now by our climate reporter, Louise Osborne. Louise, good to see you. So um, I think many people are asking themselves if these horrific fires in Los Angeles are somehow directly impacted by climate change. I mean, there has been no study so far to actually prove that link, but scientists are saying it's likely that the conditions um, that have, you know, exacerbated these fires are definitely uh, linked to climate change. Uh, we're talking about conditions, for example, um, that scientists have called whiplash conditions. So this is where, uh, for example, a couple of uh, years ago, there were very very wet uh, winters in California, which led to a lot of rain. This led to the growth of a lot of undergrowth, for example. The last year has seen very, very dry, hot conditions, which has dried out all of this undergrowth and made it like a tinderbox for these fires to spread across. Um, and it's these kinds of conditions that make these wildfires worse. The wildfires themselves are not exactly caused by climate change. Um, they are sparked in different ways, but these conditions are made worse by climate change. Well, the scientists are warning that we're going to see more extreme weather this year. What does that mean? So we're unlikely to see the same kind of high temperatures that we saw in 2024. Scientists don't think that it will be another record-breaking year. Um, that's because although we have seen uh, hot conditions that are boosted by, you know, the human burning of fossil fuels, which uh, drives up temperatures, um, it was also kind of like added to by a natural phenomena called El Nino, which typically warms oceans and the atmosphere around it. Now, El Nino has gone for the moment. Um, we're into neutral conditions at the moment. And that means that, you know, those temperatures might not hit those levels. However, that doesn't mean that this extreme weather is going to disappear. We are still seeing levels that are much higher than they should really be. Um, 1.3 degrees above um, uh, pre-industrial levels is what we have over kind of a decades long average. And that means we would still see, you know, heavy flooding, um, the potential for uh, these droughts leading to wildfires um, and all of these kinds of extreme weather events. Okay, so 1.3 is already something we've seen over the past decade, as you just told us. And 2024, however, uh, temperatures were up more than 1.5 degrees. Is there some significance to that? So basically, uh, in 2015, uh, leaders came together and they agreed to limit global warming under what's called the Paris Agreement to two degrees Celsius, pursuing efforts to keep it under 1.5 degrees, which is why this 1.5 is so significant. Now, we haven't broken this 1.5 deal just because we've had one year, uh, one full calendar year that has gone over that limit. Um, this, as I said, is a limit that is, is measured over decades, but it does mean that we are getting much closer. And scientists say that it is almost um, impossible that we are now going to stay under that benchmark. However, every degree matters and they are urging action to make sure that, you know, we don't creep much higher than that. All right, so they're urging action, but what kind of action is needed to prevent extreme weather from getting much worse? I mean, the key driver of climate change is uh, humans burning fossil fuels for our heat, industry, transport. And the main thing that needs to be done is to, to stop that. We need to move away from fossil fuels and look more to renewable energy, for example, solar or wind, uh, which does not create the same kind of greenhouse gas emissions that is leading to this warming. 
Um, but there are other things that can be done in the meantime. For example, you know, early warning systems that are going to help people adapt to the kind of extreme weather events that we're seeing, like the fires in LA. That was DW's climate reporter, Louise Osborne. Louise, always great to hear your insights. Thank you so much.